Hello everyone, my name is Liz and I work for Knee Packs at HMP Northumberland. Today I want to read you a story called The Farmer and the Giant. It's from a book called Tales from India by Bally Ray. Okay, here we go. The Farmer and the Giant. One afternoon a farmer called Lal Ram was digging a hole. Suddenly his spade hit something solid with a loud thud. Peering down, Lal spotted an earthen jar. He knelt to pull the jar from the ground and saw that it had been sealed. Curious, he gave it a shake but heard nothing inside. He set it aside and continued with his task. Later, as he was lying in bed, he began to wonder about the jar again. Perhaps it held something magical, he thought, or better still, something precious. Lal got dressed and went out to his yard, where the jar sat by the well. Lal picked it up and studied it very carefully. It was made of brown clay and someone had taken great care to seal the opening. Taking a knife, he began to prise it open. Suddenly, a cloud of white smoke escaped the jar and rose upwards into the humid air. The smoke swirled in a cyclone faster and faster until Lal saw a flash of green light. He fell backwards, landing on his behind, and he gasped because standing before him was a giant. Master, the giant bellowed, you have released me and now I am your slave. Lal scrambled away in shock. The giant wore an evil grin and clothes made of very fine silk. On his head was a scarlet turban and his ears were heavy with golden rings. Oh, don't hurt me, almighty demon, Lal cried. I will not hurt you, the giant replied. I must serve you. Lal was confused. You will serve me? he asked. Yes, the giant replied. Ask me to complete any task and I will obey. Lal stood and dusted off his clothes. He edged closer to the giant, amazed and more curious than ever. What if I ask you to lower your voice, he asked. Done, said the giant. What else? Draw me a bucket of water from the well, said Lal. Within seconds, the giant did as asked. Can it be true, asked Lal. Have I really been so fortunate? The giant began to laugh. You have, he eventually said, but you must agree to one condition. Lal nodded. What is it, he asked. You must keep me busy, the giant explained. When I am busy, I do not get hungry. Oh, what happens if you get hungry? asked Lal. Then I eat people, the giant told him. Lal shuddered at the thought, but did not run. He had a large farm and there were many tasks the giant might do. I understand, said Lal. Now let me get some sleep and we'll continue in the morning. But the giant shook his head. No, he replied, you must keep me busy at all times. But it's dark, said Lal, and I'm tired. You must keep me busy, the giant hollered. Lal sighed and asked the giant to tidy the yard. The giant lunged to his left in a flash and then to the right. All around Lal, his yard grew tidier, and within minutes, the giant had finished. Done, said the giant, another task. Lal growled, fetch me 10 more buckets of water, he said. Again, the giant completed the job in minutes. Lal shook his head and began to wonder if his fortune was really so great. 
I must sleep, he moaned. Can't you take a rest? No, master, the giant replied. If I rest, I grow hungry. And then I must eat you. Lal began to think up more tasks for the giant, but each one was completed far too quickly. Soon Lal grew so exhausted that his eyelids drooped and his legs felt like jelly. Yet still the giant demanded more tasks. My land is full of rocks and stones, Lal said. Sift every grain of soil and remove them. The giant nodded and off he went. Lal was confident that the latest task would take much longer. He dropped to the ground and fell fast asleep. However, the giant returned just 20 minutes later and woke Lal up. It is done, he proclaimed. Give me another job. Lal shook his head in sorrow. Rather than being a gift, the giant had become a curse. Soon he would run out of jobs for him to do and he would devour him. Lal sat down and wondered how to save himself. After a few minutes, he had an idea. I could do with a new house, he told the giant, but it must be made of newly cut timber from the rarest of trees. Of course, said the giant, anything else? And Lal began to imagine every room and describe them slowly. The giant listened carefully to every detail. This may take a while, he said, when Lal was finished. No problem, the farmer replied in relief. Take your time. But barely an hour later, Lal's magnificent new house was ready and the giant was bored again. Growing desperate, Lal suddenly thought of something else, something far cleverer. So, he said to the giant, you must do anything I ask. Yes, said the giant. And I must make sure you're always busy. Yes, master. Or you will eat me. I'm afraid so, master, the giant replied. Lal nodded and pointed to the field behind his brand new house. I want you to create a stone pillar, at least a hundred feet tall, he said. No problem, the giant replied. Wait, Lal ordered there's more. Once the pillar is ready, I want you to climb it. As you wish. Then, Lal added, when you reach the top, you must climb down again. The giant nodded. It sounded very straightforward and he was certain to complete the task very quickly. What happens when I climb down? He asked his master. Lal smiled. Once you get down, you will climb up again. You will continue to climb up and down until I tell you to stop. The giant agreed. It's a very odd request, he said, but I must do as you ask. The giant whooshed off to a stone quarry and very quickly the pillar was hewn from solid rock. He picked it up and flew back to Lal's farm. There, he secured the pillar in the field and began to climb up and down at great speed. Lal stood at the bottom and applauded the giant. Well done, he shouted. Now just keep, keep going. As the giant climbed up and down, up and down, up and down, Lal began to chuckle. When do I stop, master? The giant eventually asked. Oh, don't worry, replied Lal. Just keep going and I'll let you know when. Lal chuckled and went off to his magnificent new house to get some sleep. Yeah.